call the meeting to order. Don't expect that uh, Lindley will be here tonight, so it'll just be the four of us. Yeah, just uh, need an approval for the agenda this evening. Other than we are going to change the date to nine eleven. <laughs> so moved. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. And first up, public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda that <laughs> that you want to do, or oh, I'll go to if, Paul. Do you, Paul's the only other person. Paul, you have anything online? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you folks again. Uh, thank you for all you do. Um, yeah. It was just kind of neat to see we got a couple of new businesses coming to town. Um, over the weekend, it looks like we've got Tony's Snack Shack and then uh, um, something wicked cannabis company <laughs> coming to town. So it's good to see some growth in the downtown. So that's all yeah, good. The, Thank the, you cannabis, the cannabis company, there actually is another one going in. That's what's going into Richardson's Country Store. I think they said it's going to be like Cannabis Country Store. So neither yeah. one of them their permits approved yet from the state but so i'm not sure if we'll see two or if one will make it to fruition and one won't there's a lot of regulations um about cannabis and what you have to have for you know infrastructure and cameras and stuff so it'll be interesting to see but yeah tony's i've been emailing him about his eu and for sewer and water and he's hoping i think to get going maybe in october paul yeah, and uh, the other folks are looking for December first. They they didn't say where they were going to be landing yet. They don't want to do that until they have a signed lease. Uh, but they were hopeful to get be getting going by December first. They're advertising for somebody to be a uh, somebody on the counter, basically. But you have to go through the training that the state uh, dictates and and all of the stuff that you just mentioned too. So yeah, but but it's nice to see some growth downtown. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. All right, Rick. Yeah. Also, good to see you all. Thanks for all the time you guys put in for the town. I know it's a lot. I'm here representing the town meeting committee uh, today. I was uh, talked to Therese just a, about a couple of hours late getting on the agenda. Uh, so she said just come and, and speak for a few minutes under uh, public comment which I will be brief. Um, just wanted to update you guys. Since um, we we uh, started meeting again after town meeting, um, there's been a lot of discussion between us and the equity and inclusion committee about doing, um, possibly doing quarterly forums on topics of interest or concern of people in town. Um, and we already were, we're working on scheduling this week. We'll have our meeting, uh, Susan Clark, and I may have mentioned this to you guys before. Uh, she's the Middlesex Town Moderator. She's also uh, authored or co-authored uh, two or three books on town meeting history um, and, and all the elements of the pluses and minuses of different forms of town meeting. And because of what the Australian ballot question came up and there may be more that people are thinking of in that regards, um, we thought it'd be great for her to come and, and talk to She was here once about 10, at least 10 years ago. Um, and we had a good response at that time. And that's what initiated the uh, Bethel Operators Manual uh, publication that the town meeting committee had a subgroup that created that for Bethel. Um, so we're having her back here in October. Uh, the date's yet to be set just to reinvigorate that discussion. And she's since over the past 10 years or so, she's done some more studies and has some interesting data on the forms of town meeting and where where it all goes, and interesting uh, uh, information. Um, so and so that's this fall, we're, as I said, we're hoping to do, hoping to do quarterly meetings um, in, the, in the spring. Uh, because of the Australian ballot, um, there's gonna be, we're hoping to have a candidate forum for, for the candidates who want to run for all of our elected offices. So that's something we'll be working on. And then um, Jean has spoken to me about addressing climate change on a local level, and we'd be working that into um, probably the second quarter. Uh, so anyway, um, 
We're going to have a table at the Ford Festival uh, coming up on the 23rd with a questionnaire for to get more input on from the people who are there. And we may even expand that a little bit and send send some out just to you know let people make people aware of what, what we're doing and um and try to get some more interest and ideas and concerns uh, of what what people have. So kind of uh, because of all of that and because of our moniker as the town meeting committee, uh, the committee's been thinking and proposed that we change our actually change our name to the civic engagement committee, which would include the town meeting as part of their uh, our work. So it'd be kind of a little more encompassing, um, wouldn't be just specific to the town meeting um, because that's kind of a, you know, it, it comes and goes and then it's six, nine months and, and before anything else pops up. And there's been some interest on having those type of town meeting conversations, maybe a little more of an open forum, not quite so uh, formatted. Um, so we're looking for your input on that as far as what your thoughts are, as far as the name change. I'm not sure the formality we have to go to. We are a town committee um, that you folks um, uh, approve members to be on and we run under the auspice of the town. So it would be kind of a big change in the name, but um, hopefully maybe a little more all encompassing. So, so all your members have taken now? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure. I'm okay. pretty sure everybody, I can check with you because I know there were two that at the last meeting are supposed to submit. Okay, Karen? Karen. She and did. Lisa? And Lisa did. I yep. Karen and Lisa did. Yeah, I that wasn't was... sure about the Rebecca's member. She, she well, she was for you. Oh, she was for, yeah. okay. And so it's not like you had terms. Myself and Lily, I think, I think Lily had, I think she had, Yeah, she yeah. did, yeah. right. Yeah. So, okay, I think for sure we've got that covered. Oh, good. Yep. Um, so anyway, just wanted to let you know about that. Um, if you have any input on the name or, or you know, you can follow with me on that later or that's not anything for shadowing that's we gotta do today. But, so you said uh, civic engagement committee? Yeah. Okay. How did that evolve? Just from sitting around like this and throwing out names and ideas and what about this, what about that? So it's kind of hopefully is a little more of a buy-in for people, for people if they're engaged in civic mm -hmm. issues and try to get, and yeah. as part of the funny thing, I don't know about, this is the right way to say, but you get more wordy, it's something that people might not totally understand, that like, yeah, there's that. Town Hall Committee, everybody knew what that was. Sorry? Town Hall Committee, everybody knew what that was. Yeah. Yeah, they did, but it, it's also very general. Town hall or town meeting. Uh, meeting. Yeah. yeah, we were a town hall committee at one, or there was one. Um, but, you know, we thought that was a little restrictive. I mean, town meeting is once a year, and, and it's good. We need to focus on that, which we will do. But um, there's other things that there feel there's a need. No, we're going away from those words. Uh -huh. We're already in the, in, we're almost, we've almost lost our town meeting. Well, and everybody wants to do all this different stuff. And yeah, I'm not gonna have a, uh, I think I'm going to live long enough to see town meeting gone. I, I wouldn't I'm afraid. argue with you on that. I wouldn't. Uh, but does, we'll, the, does the committee currently have a mission statement or anything like we that? We do. So would, if you're thinking about changing the name, would you be changing your mission this, statement to cover whatever the name? Yeah, the statement is helping foster informed and engaged citizens, creating an environment in which individuals are welcomed, respected, supported, and valued. Is that what it always was? That's, that's what no, that's what it's been. We, we came to the select board with that nice. back in Carl Russell's days. Yeah, so. And it does say, it's kind of pretty wide ranging. Yeah, but it's like the engagement of Yeah, helping foster informed and engaged citizens. So it's not like it's the mission statement is necessarily in the county. No. Right. So people so really have that. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Been, so for a while. What was yours called? I think weren't you and well, another person a member? We tried to start yeah. a we tried to start a vision committee. All right. 
right. for the town. So the vision kind of goes in front of the town plan. So yeah. right. But just never Wasn't got it. Wasn't just you and Lila? Like? It ended up, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we just, thoughts. we couldn't, even, we got it off through. I mean, it just, yeah. there was not enough people that wanted to look yeah. at it, but it was. Yeah. And, you know, um, this may be a, a same thing, may have a lot of, a group of people may have some good ideas, but whether it resonates with mm -hmm. enough people to really, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the few we did several years ago were pretty well attended. We we combined it with like a potluck or a dessert type thing, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and tried to and, and it brought in you know enough people that it yeah. was looking good. Dave, is it something like that you don't like the word civic? So it, maybe if it was citizen engagement, I mean, do you feel like there's something that resonates with you more than another? It seems like my my uh, length of life that when it becomes when it goes from this name. But this name mm -hmm. get just like ooh. yeah well it's still just town Turns. meeting committee it's still just three words but yeah i just wasn't sure if you had a like a and i maybe too it's also hard because you don't want to see town meeting go away so to have the name change probably makes you feel like you're on the losing end of that battle is yeah i like i said I, i'm almost positive that um once you get to, once we've gone to this much australian ballot and i mean look at randolph they have a town meeting informational. Maybe 10 people out of 6,000 show up, mm -hmm. 20 on a good night. Yeah. I mean, those things that, that uh, Susan Clark has information on yeah. is kind of eye opening for people. So, I'm uh, uh, wondering if uh, <laughs> kind of the best of both worlds uh, is town meeting and civic engagement committee to. Uh, or is this? so is that we that? retain town meeting in the title so that we're not uh, signaling to anybody <laughs> or anybody. I'm afraid that if you walk down the street tomorrow and ask everybody you've talked to, what does civil engagement mean? Half of them will not have the right answer or any answer at all. If you walk down and say, what does town meeting mean? I'll guarantee you that 90% of them will give you the right answer. Uh, that's changed. It's changed. I, 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 mean, I, just, I think with the vote last year, it, yeah. unfortunately, town yep. meeting is probably going to come to an end here in the next couple of you know, years or less than a decade. And it's COVID. It's too uh, bad. The new people moving in. It's all the whole culture. The new generation. And, and, you know, it's just, and I'm not pleased. Hopefully Susan has some really, maybe people hearing someone who's done such intense work on it and hearing her, maybe we'll change some minds because it's coming from someone not here, not us. It's coming from someone out who really has done the work. Third town, she's has done, done this. It's something relatively new um, that's, that she's been doing. So I think it's Peachum and one other town that she's already done this well it's like Royalton last year I mean they're supposed to always have their informational meeting town meeting and they canceled that last year and there was a there was quite the uproar because they had um they were talking about the constable was on there and something town else manager. that they didn't get yeah, town that town administrator town manager um position and none of that even got brought up other than the, the board meeting yeah, that's, you know, that's still focused on preserving town meeting as much as possible and and um you know, the other thing we have to start this fall is promoting, which we haven't done through COVID, is the budget process of the town. And the school now is so, so apart from us that we need to be active on that as well. Yeah. You know, because people. When you do, when you have Susan Palmer, I'm going to do like Eats Coffee. Yeah, of some, some that sort of thing. Well, come and see me because I'm sure I could. I, th I have some, there's some committee money, okay. so um, I'm sure that we could help you fund that to, to get more people to come. I have a suggestion with the performance of my as well. The school is with food and child care and that uh, I was meeting with them the other day and they said, we, we're gonna do this quarterly. Do you have any ideas for what we might do in the future? Oh, 
So it might be a good partnership between the two groups. So um, who is leading that? Hmm? Who is leading that group? The Mary Shell. Mary Shell. Hopefully, having this forum over there for the for the town, right? For so I, that's that's a that's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, that's a that's a school. The supervisory union is asking that all of their schools have a quarterly community engagement kind of thing, and are calling it a community conversation. That's so they they do there is one coming in October and I've got a public comment about that but but this I like the idea of civic engagement um for those who are not uh native born Vermonters that speaks volumes in ways that town meeting does not and we are going to continue to be a go-to state for people who are fleeing forest fires and floods. Uh, they missed the boat on the flood thing, but uh, yeah, that damn but, but so the, my my point is, we're going to have more and more people who are with the the town meeting idea, and I. I think civic engagement is a powerful um, yeah okay all right so appreciate all that input and I will I, I will go back with him and propose that civic yeah that's much needed as well civil civics right Right. So anyway, that's uh, well. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that was brought up as well, and that's why I think Rebecca was going over it. But the one in October is not, as far from what you've heard, is not um, Susan Clark at the school. The October event. Or, no, you know, no, no, it is something else. No, I don't. what day is this? So they don't schedule the same day. October fifth. The school conversation is is about climate, uh, and it is uh, brought by the energy our energy committee three hundred and fifty Vermont two rivers and the school um, to talk about uh, burning versus the, the title is burning versus burrowing. Are we going to burn stuff to get our energy and our heat or are we going to dig into the earth and go thermal? Okay. All right. So that is the programming at the five thirty. Yeah. Five thirty program, five o'clock food. Yep. yep. And the schools providing food and child care. Okay. And I'm hoping high school students to help with some small group collaboration. Okay. And they still need this well, if anyone knows anymore. Uh, they still need seniors still need so many hours of civic duty uh, work, right? It's not a policy. I'm sure it's not. Community service. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I was, yeah, yeah, still was, uh, still was on a hat, uh, one semester deal. It was pretty broad what they accepted <laughs> as being community service. Okay. okay. Well, thanks very much, folks. And, uh, you know, I sent you that email that Jean had sent me about that October 5th. Thank you. So, while I'm here, she's going to be working 
for the town of Bethel, as I mentioned before, in a temporary <laughs> seasonal sort of capacity as an appraiser. He's been, been with Mo and Judy. I'm going to spend some time with Mo and Judy on Wednesday and then um, see where we're at and then maybe bring Nemrick in to kind of maybe either do some training or there's been some glitches in the system that should not be happening. So I may end up bringing Nemrick, someone from Nemrick to come in and sort some of the bugs out. And then um, of course we know we can contract with them to do some work, but Pam is also willing once we walk her through how to do like update PTTRs and stuff, she's willing to do some stuff. So be a little collaboration, but we'll still be using, maybe using Nemrick to do some stuff. And then, like I said before, I think we'll be moving towards a town meeting vote to remove the office of blisters and go to an outside system. So, but in the meantime, um, Rick has come in a couple times and a few times and, and uh, trying to hopefully between all of us, we can get it together. Is the jam we got there last day is Friday. So, and like I said, I think we'll just regroup once they're, once they move on and then we'll regroup and maybe bring Nemrick in to do a little training <clears throat> some afternoon for you and I and Pam and, and uh, they know the software and, and if there's bugs in it, he is, I, I know Chris Mealy, he'll, right. he's going to deal with it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Sure. <laughs> exactly. But I think if he comes here, it'll be just easier. So I'll try to, I'm going to send him an email try to get that going too. So appreciate that. And this planning commission starts again, September 21st or 19th, yeah. something like that. So we're going to be starting work on the town plan. <clears throat> Great. Well, thanks, Rick. Twenty-first. sorry. Yep. It's 21st. All right. Hey, See you later. Address. Thank you. So next uh, for discussion is the amendment um, that we talked about before in regards to the ordinance regulating control of garbage. Uh, we talked there that when we had gone through the ordinance, there were specifically some uh, manure type issues for farms that wasn't directly addressed one way or the other. Yeah, so. it wasn't our intent originally. So um, I did some research, uh, worked with the notes that we received because we did receive um, advice from our attorney on what part of the ordinance was that they found was goofing us up. And it wasn't, this, it wasn't the wording manure, it was discarded material. So the only thing, so I went through and did some research and re read about the required agricultural practices. And so it, it seems like the only way we can do this is to exempt them from the ordinance. And that's hence I put in the statement, all farms is classified by the state of Vermont agency of agriculture, food and markets shall be exempt from this ordinance as they are required to comply with required agricultural practices per title six of Vermont's statutes annotated. The other thing too is if you, which I don't expect with current, owners but if you had a trash problem there we can go to the state we can there's they have their own compliance program so it's not like just if we exempt them from the whole ordinance we don't have um the ability to do something we do it we would just contact the state and we could go from that direction but since it's discarded materials that's i, I don't know how to fix that um so it wasn't just manure that was the issue so this is what I came up with, um, is just that statement. And um, I I did a little more look, <laughs> looking and I cannot find in Title VI any heading required agricultural practices. I could not find any title that had anything to do with discarded materials. Well, discarded materials is what the lawyer told us. He, I, he, I, went to, I went to Title VI. Yeah, no, they don't talk about discarded materials. Well, I think Phil says it's a discarded object likely to injure them. I mean, there's nothing. Um, let me see. I can tell you discarded where Discarded object it. likely to injure right, person, create required... traffic, hazard, or degrade the environment. So it says under Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Vermont, it calls them, it says, 
the required agricultural practices and it talks about which standards they are and it gave me a summary and if i click on this link i guess you I'm could clicking go on i'm clicking on what i found if you look under title nine wrap rule there's some stuff in there in regards to discard material yeah hang on. let me see what he i'm trying to find it because so it said I get out of there. Let's scroll down. I'm trying to figure out where I found it. Um, because they referred to it in one of the things that I read. So let me see if it's just loading. Let me see if it's just want to make sure. Yeah. In my mind. That no, absolutely. We don't have a confusion. So we have someone sitting out there in the chair say, well, "That doesn't say anything." Right. Exactly. That doesn't. That doesn't do anything for me. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. All right. It's loading. Okay, let's see if it's going to tell me. Okay, enabling as defined in in 6 BSA 4810, 4810A, the required agricultural practices shall be management standards to follow by all persons engaged in farming in this state. So there, it's 6 VSA 4810 and 4810A. So Title VI is, is what it's saying. So that's where I got it. It was right off their website. But okay, it's in under Title VI. That's what it says. So I'll look, 4810. I think I know I don't know. Okay. This is, if you don't do this all the time, it's not that easy. No, I agree. It's under, actually, it's under Chapter 215, Water Quality. Okay. Let's see. We do Vermont statutes. There we go. I <laughs> hope it's not Vermont statutes. Hang on. There we go. Let's see. There we go. Title six agriculture and then forty eight ten. Yep, agricultural water quality. Yeah. So that's where it is. Which I can see that maybe when the cattle are crossing a stream and they decide or in the road if you had runoff if you had runoff yeah so that's the so that's how i found it but because what the what the um attorney was saying is that under one of our definitions garbage um it's readily putrescible discarded material so he's like that's the clincher i'm like well how can you, you know so I'm, like, I, I'm like i don't know and the required agricultural practices do talk about, you know, yes, they do address manure. Um, so anyways, that's how I got there. And discarded material covers a lot of ground. So that. See, that goes the other way. <laughs> so I'm like. I chewed my gum and I threw it out on the ground. That's discarded material. So anyways, so hence, if we just. So that, that anyways, that was my so. Anyway, I just wanted to see yes, some course. more writing. No, no, I'm glad that you checked. Type no way. The regulations about farming um, is is there a way that we can define not to exempt them from the entire. Uh, well, that's what I tried to do. But, but to define manure as not garbage. Yeah. I think that's where it, he's saying that it's discarded material, and we already use that as the basis of our definition of garbage. And so the only time we talk about waste is um, the only time we talk about newer is I think we use the term in solid waste I can't remember. So if 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 they cleaned out their barn and spread that manure on the road, I would have a problem. Right. Uh, but 
And that uh, was one of Brian's complaints was that it was on the road. I understand. Yeah. And and I'm I guess I was looking at it the trick. other way. It's I think it's tough to either add or subtract, but I wonder if there's more wordage that we could put on the enforcement end of things, like giving us more power to so we we're not going to enforce it, you know. Um, I, I don't think I, I think the whole purpose of the ordinance was to to have an ordinance that controlled every every landowner, right? Responsible, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, there's got to be a way that we can. I mean, I mean, you wouldn't want to exempt manure because then somebody could just go down the road to right. spread it all over the place, right? I mean, and I have a container in my garage <laughs> that contains trash. I have not taken it to the dump. Right. When does it become discarded? Well, the discard when I put it in the bucket or when it goes from my property to Yeah, I, I would assume that the minute it leaves your house and goes into the trash, it's considered discarded material because you have you have disposed of it. You've tossed it away in a trash bag. So the fact that it's still in your in a garbage bag in your garage complies with the ordinance. That that's that's what it should be doing. And I don't think that you can write an ordinance that is all encompassing and then say, but we're not gonna enforce this part of it. Because if I, I just would think you'd lose that about but I don't think you can exempt any one identity either. Because if you exempt an identity mm -hmm. and we say, well, you could enforce that through state yep. law, well, you could exempt everybody else and enforce it through state law too. You could. You know, and then you're just well, right you back where you started. And you have one farm in Bethel. Next but I can tell you that the state isn't going to, I mean, I'll just make it up. Let's say you have a farmer and yeah, you exempt them enforce. and they have a pile of stuff all mm -hmm. scattered throughout the curbside, right? State of Vermont is not going to come in and regulate that. Yeah. They don't have enough people. They're not they're yeah. not even doing it. You can make all the calls you want. They're never coming. Because we you know so the, the problem is then is how to I just wonder if either either there's an opportunity to inside the definition to exclude maybe an item or limit it. Mm -hmm. Or is there something on the enforcement end of things that gives us the power to say we're not going to enforce I don't think you can do that. At, at the discretion of, you know, I mean, because again, I mean, if somebody's spreading manure literally down the road, that's different than somebody that has walking their equipment from one field to the other, and there might be some stuff yeah. that hits the road. Because we talk right? about, I mean, it's much different. So compost defines animal manure, and then it does, we talk about, you know, composting and as per the state that compostable material may be collected and maintained on personal property, blah, blah, blah. But the key to the whole thing is that that our lawyer is telling us that it would be considered discarded material. So I, I'm at a loss. I don't know how to, how to exempt material. I'm happy to write to the lawyer and ask him his opinion, but other than exempting them this way, I do not know how to do that. How to, if manure is considered discarded material, and that's the thing we're getting hung up on. I don't know, but I'm happy to but ask the lawyer. It's, it's fertilizer also. But the, waving is the, the way that we, you know, talk about this is um, that it's, I, I, I'm not the one who gave you a legal opinion. You know, the lawyer. So that that's that's. What, but I'm happy to go back to him and ask him how we could word it in a better way. Let me look at that. The whole sentence in the policy, not just discarded materials, but is putrescible. Right. Discarded materials, and the sentence continues and ends with slowly decaying materials. Um, is a is a cow pie slowly decaying, or is that putre? How long is it putrescible? I think it's a it's it's not like the the manure that's gathered in your barn, 
right yeah i don't i don't again that you're we're we should I'm, it, it's it's the whole sentence is the definition, right. not just those yeah. two words. Paul Valley's waving. Well, so I suggest that then we just hold off on this and let me figure it out with the lawyer because, you know, we're not lawyers and we paid for his opinion. We're not in that situation. Right. Yeah. But Paul had his hand up. Paul, what do you think? Well, I'm just wondering if, if, <clears throat> the reasoning behind all this is to try to patch, put a patch on the ordinance that kind of covers our liability in this particular situation that you folks have been dealing with um, up off the Gilead there and trying to make sure that we're covered uh, for the decision that was made before. And maybe there's a hole in our current ordinance that needs to be patched to kind of help out with this situation. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do is yeah. to figure out what the patch is. And um, so, like I, so yeah, I think that we'll end up having to, I'll go back to the But I mean, I think we're, I mean, we're at the point where, you know, just like any ordinance, you can pick these things apart, right? I mean, right. you know, like, I'm There's a difference between days. having 50 trash bags lined up at the curbside and having one trash bag, right? right? Absolutely. Right. And that's kind of the same thing with, we're here. We're not talking about a road that's completely covered in manure. We're talking about s small individual pieces of manure that's in the road, you know? So it's, I mean, you can interpret that thing any which way. That's right. You know, I just wonder if there's more of a, on an enforcement end of things, do does it, well, can we allow ourselves some more leeway to enforce or not enforce? I know it right now it just kind of says that it's up to the town manager to enforce. Yeah. Um, so at their discretion, you know, I don't, you know, I well, guess I, but the, I, yeah, but I definitely wouldn't be supportive of, word, yeah, you used an important word and that is interpretation, right, or discretion. So my question of the attorney is, are we within the broad definition stated on the garbage to say that doesn't include individual cow pies that happen to be left on the road? Yeah, I'll have to ask. That. <laughs> I mean, that's send an email to the hair. If that's an interpretation. Yeah. Because it just, it just kind of opens up a big, you know, I mean, that could come down to the individual that's riding their horse down the road. Well, you know, I mean, it, it just becomes absolutely a bigger issue of, yeah. you know, the, the horse riders will be chasing just like the dog walkers, exactly. you know, pick up, you know, it's like, where does it, you know, stop or end? And I know that's Vermont and it's kind of the uniqueness to Vermont, right? It's, you know, small and seeing a little bit of it tracked out of the field onto the road a little ways before it disappeared. You know, I mean, that's kind of, Kind of a wrong, right? That's right. Um, but I just wonder if, like Paul was saying, is there a way? Is there a way for us to, you know, be able to patch or or have more leeway inside our own ordinance, but at the same time protect us from some past yeah, um, decisions that have been made of a serious okay. nature? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm sending a message to the Herald. Or not published so um yeah that's <laughs> fine so yeah no no so anyways yeah, yeah this so it's uh as i said this was my interpretation this is what i came up with and he had read a bunch of you know he drafted this ordinance with dean tree we, you know obviously read a ton of i don't think you want to like that, so it's tough because you, you wouldn't want to just go and say well we want to exempt this because if there is a lot of manure on the road then we want to clean right. that. I mean, and we did you know exempt. I mean? so, and right. then it, it's a water quality right. issue because right. here we did exempt under that's why i just keep going back I under solid waste we said tires that are used in a bona fide agricultural operation are excluded from this definition and i did try to think of how to word that as far as manure but i'm like all right but it isn't technically the word manure is what's triggering the issue it's discarded material so again i'll just have to talk to the lawyer and ask him what his it, thought is it's so, it's somewhere know. along the line there's a tipping point between right. what we're going to pay attention to and what we're not 
right you know right but i just don't think that you can write an ordinance and then say okay here's our whole ordinance and then in the bottom say but we're not going to enforce something i, I don't see that whole yeah. in court but again I'm well again we, we've saying. already said that you can work and enforce tires because but, the bona fide right well, you know, exactly but, mm -hmm. but so you, maybe, maybe but, there's got to be an agricultural so, so line the, 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 agricultural loophole that's exactly what i was the saying. loophole language is significant is there a significant amount? Is there a, a significant risk to health? I mean, is there? But who's to define the significant? It, you know, it's in there so that the 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 town authorities define when when something kicks in, so that it doesn't kick in because I'm walking my dog. But it does kick in when I spread manure on the highway. Right. That's there is a judgment. I mean, right. and which is our judgment is already being called into question. Well, I mean, so I'm afraid if we're too vague, significant that we're judging is not going to be acceptable. Well, that's why I am wondering if you can oh, just yeah, care what's acceptable to certain <laughs> individuals. I want some. I I think it's fair to say. All ask because obviously. There's got, I mean, there's got to be something. We're, we're using judgment every day on this to begin with. Right? Absolutely. I mean, sure if we're talking about leaves, let's say, if someone's got a little leaf pile because they just raked it, we're not going and saying, here you go. But if they have, you know, garbage of bags piled up to the roof of their house, that's like a different Yeah. Question. You know? Yeah. So, what, how many people yeah. have had an accident and been in serious trouble with? A manure pile on the road. Okay, None that you know of. How many motorcyclists have been seriously injured because somebody blew their lawn Fresh. clippings onto the road? Mm -hmm. That's discarded material. Right. It's a serious safety hazard. Yeah. Are we going to find him too? Right. It's a good point. Well, it's technically, it's against the law. It is against the law. Grass clippings. Grass clippings. Yeah. Have you ever seen anybody taken to court? No. No, I haven't, but yeah. So what, right. what I'm saying is we're we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're so far in the weeds right now mm -hmm. that I don't know how to get out. Yeah, no doubt. And it's like, I was looking for an agriculture exemption thinking, okay, if we exempt tires, right. there may be a bona fide act. But like I said, I couldn't come up with it. But we but, still want to have the ability to regulate trash. To regulate if someone owns a farm and they have a serious like amount that. of trash piled up that is, because that's yeah. where it all started, right? It was, you know, it, yes. it was an area where the health officer could do anything about it, right? And that's where this whole thing started, right, Paul? I mean, it was, yeah. you know, yeah. we have an issue, and that started from Louisville, really, mm -hmm. right? We had an issue in Louisville where there was trash piled up to the roof of a house. Yeah. But as a health officer, you had no way of regulating that. That's right. You know, it did not come to define the terms of being yeah. a health risk yeah. or, or a safety risk. So. So that was kind of one of the things. And then we had the spring pop-ups, right? We had, <laughs> you know, those three or four places in the springtime that, or, or the couple of instances where we've had things pile up large over periods of time. And yep. I no, mean, really, but again, we talked about this, we made this ordinance yes, that, yes, we did. you know, we it's, it's yes, very tricky because you don't yeah. want to all of a sudden get into the say, well, Gene's lawn is now 12 inches. He should have mowed that thing right. last week. You know, right. I mean, we, but we want it to work still too, you know. Yeah. But we still want it to work, but we don't want to fully exempt somebody. And either. people I mean, also felt that we didn't go far enough because when we presented this at town meeting, we took cars out. Remember, we thought we were going to use like a registered, like we had more than three unregistered vehicles. We talked about that, but we never thought it would go through town meeting, and it did. And then people were like, "You didn't go far enough." So, anyway, so we'll find out. We'll just let's just leave it alone for now, and we'll. I'll see what he has to say and what, what Dave's suggestions are. Dave Roof. It's all Paul's fault. It's all Paul's fault. That's right. Paul and Mo. That's hey, Paul. hey, hey. <laughs> see what you started. Can I have one last comment? Sure. sure. So part of the issue, though, is that in left-handedly, with the decision about the cattle in the road up on off of Gilead, that the town has kind of acquiesced to the fact that manure in the road um, is not 
unacceptable. So it's a slippery slope you start to go down when you try to dictate um, horses walking up the road or or cattle or things like that. So, but the president precedent has kind of been set in that particular case anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their intent was to never, the select board's intent was never to deal with cow manure. It was just, it came up in a recent, you know, uh, legal issue. Yeah, it, so, it was part of the process, yeah. Yeah, so it was one of those things that it was never meant, that was not why the select board's intent was to do the policy. They were more trash, and then this just kind of came up. So we'll see what the lawyer has to say. I'm surprised that that's not covered somehow under a state. I know you think you know because I mean just think of the state roads, even the state roads that mm-hmm. get littered with manure that you know somebody drives out of the field and they go a half mile down there to get back in another field. Well, they've right? talked about that, and saying that there's, there's got to be some there type was. of there was. My father had that wanted the state police to go up and get him because he spilled some manure going around a corner, and we were told that they're the the at that time. Now we're talking back in the '60s. There was a right to farm law, and that's part of it. I'll have to Google that right to farm. So I will Google it. We'll do a little more research into it and see. You know, maybe we don't need to do anything with our ordinance if there's a subsection of a policy from the yeah, state we'll of find Vermont it. that well, says. I find it when I was Googling it, but maybe know. I wasn't. Or we could just it. refer to it, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. That. I'm not sure we want to do anything with the ordinance anyway. Because at some point we're going to say, I don't care if you walk your dog and it it leaves a pile on the the road, I'm not going to prosecute. I mean, it's just uh, at some point there's a tipping point before something becomes... Exactly. And And I know our intentions were always to go after the extreme yeah issues it wasn't to do a nitpick you know right chase little manure it was more like you got a you've got 1500 bags of trash outside you know? yeah. really liable yeah i'd be just as happy just leaving it i, I mean i don't think as a court of law would be very it's tough to reasonable on discretion you know this some re- a yeah, reason but, another yeah. of those Wiggle words is reasonable. You're already being taken to court for another issue, then I don't think the person occurring the bill would be too concerned about tagging on something else if they're trying to get you. But let's just find out what he has to say. And then he's the one who brought it up. Uh, so let's just see what the lawyer says. Archaeology. Mm-hmm. If we've got just a minute. Vermont, yeah. Vermont RTF law provides no explicit protection of farmland or farms by size, for example, small or organization, for example, family. Instead, Vermont's RTF law, similar to those in the other 49 states, protects agricultural activities from nuisance suits when they impact neighboring property, for example, through noise or pollution. Does it give you a um, VSA number? Uh, VSA 12, VSA 5751. Wait, VSA 12, sorry. 5751 through 5754. Okay, perfect. I'll check it out. Thank you. It's hard when you're Googling the statutes about manure in the road and you're like, you're looking for keywords. I'm like, okay. That's right. Yep, I have, uh, oh, I had significant, but also. Okay. That's a term that does appear in legislation. Sure. All right, let's see what he says. But I'll look up his VSA 12. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of language here that goes back to what we just changed it from will to shall. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Then you shall know. means we may or may yeah. not. You know? yeah, exactly. You know? All right. That sounds good. Okay. Figure it out. Feeling that that word is going to come up over the years. Okay. If anybody happens to be on the board well, for years, that's going to come up a few we times. We had talked about making it tougher once yeah. we went through town meeting and people were like, how come you didn't do vehicles? How come you didn't? We're like, we didn't think you'd take it. You know, we didn't think you'd pass it. So, so we're really just, I mean, all we're trying to do with this keep, was just get the point across to, yeah. you know, the extreme orders to exactly. clean up things so that it doesn't become a safety 
exactly. or, or health risk. That's really, right. I mean, that was kind of the whole thing. Um, it's true. Yeah, it was all Paul's and Moe's fault. So. That's right. Uh, they got on, made made it, and then jumped off the board, you know. <laughs> <laughs> One and done. <laughs> all right. So let's see. We're um, on just kind of update and flood repairs, and we've been working on some of the ideas for the larger sections of Finley Bridge Road. So I don't know where yeah. you want to. So, uh, so well, you, Woodland is partially done. Twenty five percent. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot for anybody that's been up Woodland. It's you know, Woodland had, um, like one section that was really bad to the point like it's like complete rebuild, but you couldn't even walk up it. So we're about halfway done of the complete rebuild section, and then there's other sections that might be you know half the road or you know pieces of road that we still have to do. But we're tackling the big sections and working around the rain. And you still have culverts up above. Yeah, yeah, we've you know replaced a few culverts so far, and we've done, you know, we've put in probably on average like four feet, four to five feet of material through there, you know, to build the road again. So it's coming along. We've, um, as Teresa say, we've signed contracts with everything we had out there. Um, the only, you know, we're getting ready. I'm assuming probably in the next week time frame to start doing the west quadrant pieces, which is like. Louisville, Whitt Whittier, uh, that those types of pieces. Um, same contractor that's doing the grant work for Macintosh will do the pieces of like Sand Hill and Peavine and Abbott Road, Old Twelve. Um, so, so they're starting, you know, the Macintosh stuff now. So it'll be a couple of weeks before anything gets started on those. Um, and once the West Quadrant's done, that's WB Rogers. Yeah. They'll move to Cleveland, Cleveland Brook Road. Cleveland Brook to do Cleveland Brook. Um, and then you've got some stuff on North Road. I have some. Still. I have Dan McCullough. We're waiting for structures. Um, so once those come, we will get um, North Road will be done. And then I just got the H&H &H study. I printed that off the brief for Perham Road. That's like a bit it's a big squash pipe or a box culvert, but most likely a squash pipe. So now we'll have to take a look at that and then order that and see how far out that's gonna be. That'll get bid out as a separate project and um so so for the most most part, pretty much all the contracts have been bid out mm -hmm. and we have signed contracts with contractors and some mm -hmm. of those contractors have started to do some work. So yeah. That's kind of where we're at. And we have yeah, been doing a lot and yeah, you've been Teresa and I have been out. doing a lot of prep work to get them so that they as soon as they are ready to go, everything's ready to go. So that yeah. And uh, the H and H study for Perm we just got today. That's why that hadn't been bid out because mm -hmm. we needed an H and H study to figure out what it was. That one just got today. So that's going out. And then we have to do one for Sand Hill. So I'm waiting on that one. Um and then we got some really bad news about Camp Brook Road. So the federal highways is going to pay for the big culvert up top where we have currently have traffic lights, but they are not going to pay anything towards the one down at this point down um, just before Doug and Joanne's marshals if you're headed up. So um, that could be a really big hit for us, like up to a half, we're talking a half million. And um, so I have been working with VTrans District 4, you know, our project manager for District 4 has been great. And I have a $200,000, you know, structures grant for Peavine Bridge, which he said I could move up there to ease some of the cost. And um, he is, I'm going to, um, he's supposed to be sending, he was going to send out somebody uh, to do like a bridge inspection because he asked me my opinion about it for the winter. And I said, no one that works for the town of Bethel is going to give you an engineering opinion on whether or not that can last the winter. I said, there's no way we are not, we can't accept that liability. We don't know. So he was going to send someone out to take a look at it and kind of see what our options are. And um, he's been fighting for us to try to get it through federal highways. And maybe if the bridge inspection, you know, is saying, you know, if we could prove that there was some damage, more damage because of the flood, but basically pipe is old and, 
you can see where it's folded over that was previous rust and that on you know you can see that that it's maintenance that should some of the case should have been done a while ago so that we're in a holding pattern right there so yeah we're um, trying to catch 22 there because yeah the, the federal highway says that they're not going to put it for it and fema says well we don't get involved in federal, federal highway, highway projects so FEMA's off. so fema doesn't won't get involved in it so, so it this becomes us. the state will work with us to try to shift some grants around and maybe potentially give us one extra grant to help well, soften the blow but yeah i just know, got probably the on, the, on that he said and on that. the hook for probably at least half of it oh at least if not more because yeah somebody had mentioned we could get this other grant and then now he's you know a little backpedaling a little bit saying well it's pretty competitive and you don't have this issue i'm like hmm. So yesterday I could have got money, but today all of a sudden the new rules. So <clears throat> we don't qualify for EWP program because it's on a federal highway. And um, so I'm, you know, shaking the bushes here to see what we can do. But um, this is one of those cases which my children Probably. hate to hear me say, but sometimes it just is what it is. And we're going to have to say, huh? Toll road, no doubt. So the only good, yeah. So... I don't know. So I have Kurt and Dick work their magic. You we'll know, see what keeps yeah. up there because there's got to be something somewhere. Where yeah. Can, there's, I mean, there's a long term, like a bike ped grant, but we know that that's a three to five year process. And that's yeah. if we get it. So it, it's really, I'm hopefully going to see what the bridge inspector has to say. And if he's, you know, whether it can take it or not, you know, we'd already had one boring done and, so we have some of that data, but I I don't know. I said, could it be another, maybe it's a maybe bridge, <laughs> so, which would be we a We have to change bridge. the town name pretty soon. Super fix. The town of maybe bridge. Yeah. <laughs> As we have them well, all over the place. That's what we should have done. I mean, yeah. I love that. I, I, I will say so from, I don't know. from being out and looking at, well, being a part of all the flood report repair stuff is a majority of the work that we have done in the past didn't really get affected this time around so you know on a positive note that some of the upgrades that we did do um or uh, i'll say most of After the upgrades 19. we did do weren't affected as as much or if at all this time around <laughs> there are still some problem areas i've been noting them for trees there are some problem areas that are over and over again repeat events yeah, or just go every time. So yeah. the H and H study on those two yeah, places so was like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah. So there's I, a couple my of fifth grade just... grandson could see that. I know this going to this going to this. But the problem work. is that you had to for FEMA. I know. To upgrade I know. Mitigation because you're right, and it it it's a no brainer. But you had no to part of the process. But so anyway, so we'll see what's going on at Camp Brook Road. Um, you know, I, at this point. I don't know. So we're trying to work it out and see what we can find out. And um, the other thing obviously was in your packet was the bridge road. I do have a meeting on Friday at two o'clock with Carlos, our PDMG for FEMA. So I'm going to give him this information and I'll be interested to see if we can go through FEMA mitigation. This obviously is an expensive fix, and he did it do it in sight so that there's some stuff we could do, some stuff we don't have to do. Um, if you chose, you know, to do any, what I want to find out is if FEMA will cover any of these costs if it goes through mitigation. Because as you can see by some of the information, the drawings, I mean, if it's like this one here, the states where it shows you what he's going to do, I mean, this definitely is going to stabilize that road for, like I said to you, about 75 years. I have not done the measurements and the quantities to see how much we would spend in riprap to armor that entire bank and that I haven't done. I went out on 107 and they didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. They just said this bank needs to be at this grade yeah. and it needs to have this riprap on it. And yeah. that's what, and this is a very similar. Was that on 107? Yeah. When the state did it? Yeah. Yeah. From Irene. Right. Uh, but the bank going out, going north on the right, that's basically the same situation. Mm -hmm. That you need to, that bank needs to go back and then be rip -wrapped. That's the, that's the right. The right, way, right way to fix that. The unfortunate part is about going back on the top slope is that, you know, obviously we're outside of our right of way, but parts of it, it's really steep. 
So I don't even, I mean, when you go back here, this is collapsing down. So, I mean, it's going to be very expensive to do that as well, because if you're digging into that <laughs> and you have material above, so you're dealing with the whole slope stabilization, it's fine. And, you know, I'm assuming that they did something other than just put stone in there. They must have done something underneath well, that, to stabilize Like the, the 107 bank. one is more like on a two or three to one slope back they, where they, where this sure like did. in this report here they were talking about this would be a one-on-one -on -one slope which i mean i don't know i i, I think that they're obviously cheaper methods. well yeah i'll go back the up the up end slope we could probably rip wrap that excavate out rip wrap that to like a one one and a half on one slope which is pretty steep, but we could, I think we could fix that, you know, for a lot less money than they have here. Sure. You probably fit it, fix it for a hundred thousand um, dollars. The part that I would be most concerned about is the lower end slope is, well, there's quite the drop. I mean, it's gotta be, you know, a hundred <laughs> something feet down. <laughs> down, yeah. Um, and we're, we're fighting somebody that been like on or it, there's really not hundred years have moved a hundred years ago yeah. their bank could have yeah. been stabilized I mean, much easier well exactly i don't understand why because there's there is an old road down below and so why when they built it up they didn't stabilize as they went is beyond me and and you know i'm not sure i haven't i don't know if he has the measurement of all the slopes here but if we did the length and the depth with i don't it's that's just like any, you know, there. most roads around anywhere, you know, they were paths at one point that mm -hmm. got built into a road that, you know, yeah. um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I I mean so if you did a hundred thousand up on top, you're easily going to do three I, on the, I mean, we could spend a half million just rip wrapping. I just thing. don't think you do anything on the bottom. I think you just leave it the way it is. Just let it continue to deteriorate. Or, or at there mm -hmm. be a point in time where you're going to have to say, well, it, might, it, might it is what it is, but rip wrap, uh, wrap the river to contain its amount of uh, destruction. But another high water event. But if you look at his report here, that the lower slope here, that they're not going to go all the way down. To no, the no, and that's what we said. This is just the upper third, <laughs> yeah. let's say. Exactly. So it's going to continue to erode the bottom. And what he said. At some yeah. point, that million dollars you put into this is going to be obsolete because it's going to detach once yeah. once you lose more erosion on the bottom. Well, as, as I explained at last meeting, was what he'd said was, yes, you don't go all the way to the bottom, so you're doing material and toe of the slope, and then you get yeah. inspected every once or twice a year, and yes, you're going to have to do maintenance to the bottom, but it would hold the top of the road. But, um, so, I mean, like I said, I can just, I can run this by FEMA on Friday and see what they have to say. We obviously, we haven't put it out to bid. We haven't done anything. Um, with that road and well that's not true we've done work to Finley Bridge Road excuse me we just haven't done anything right there um, so we will have to make a determination of what we're going to do out there um, but I, mean, I think I you fix the up end slope it's, I mean it's kind of one of those things like, like how much liability does the town have if somebody's driving along there and down over the side they go but it's been like that forever. Right? Morgan said they pull so, out cars there, you know, in the winter. The fire department has pulled vehicles out of them from down from there. That's what he said. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's kind of, to me, it just seems like one of those roads that eventually it's not going to be like, yeah. you know, at, at some point, you know, Mother Nature and Stream is going to decide that it's not going to be there. So, yeah. do we want to put a million dollars into that? To, 10 years down the road to find well, out it's two and a half we could spend but, a half million but you know what i mean around. yeah you know to, to find out that it's not going to be there and eventually it's just going to succumb to what is going to happen so what we'll at least need to do is we can stabilize the slope that's fine but we do need to ditch and put what was there for many years was a berm on the drop side and the road was kind of angled toward the upper embankment so that water would kind of run along through there and we probably need to get some culverts in there to get the water off the road. Um, but for years, there was a berm, 
and so that the water wouldn't, you know, people, A, couldn't go off the edge of the road and it really helped slow them down. And, but it was keeping the water in the road. Um, if berm it on the water. outside? <clears throat> yeah. The road. There was a berm on the outside for a long time, for years, um, is what Morgan said, that Gary always had a berm there. And you angled the road like this, so it was angled towards the embankment, the upper slope. So the water would go along through there and it kind of kept the water off the road to some extent. But a few years ago, the berm was removed and the road was crowned and now it's <clears throat> eroded because when it slid, it slid across the road. Um, so even if you put stone across the road, you get another big rainstorm like this, obviously it's then the stone's going into the road, which I guess will slide over the bank. <laughs> to bank. Armor your bank, but we've got to do something out there, I would imagine snow flies i'll have to talk to morgan about it tomorrow but i just want to see what fema has to say about this and about what the options are because we would be on the hook for 12 and a half percent obviously it's 12 and a half or 2.5 million but we don't have to do all this work either i would say at this point if we can armor the up up end yeah don't you know re-ditch along the armor men and maybe re-put the berm on the outside okay. you know i mean that you know, might, that might be something that costs us a, you know, maybe hundred and fifty thousand, of which might be ten or so thousand on our end. You know, mm -hmm. it is. So a big question to ask is: Are we saving at the end of the day? Are we really saving the money, uh, or are we putting band aids on a? Of an incision that needs st stitches. Do you understand? Yeah, well, it's, I, it's, it's, uh, it's I mean, at some point, it, we're going to have to make that decision. If the river, you allow the river to continue, or the state, you know, right now we can't get the river. So, say the river runs its course and eventually eats the road off, then I guess that was the decision you made. So, is to just let that road will eventually just deteriorate and eventually people on one side are going to have to drive around and people on this. I know. And Save two and a half million. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you'd have some very unhappy people, but, but that's you sometimes some happy people. You might. Yeah, the taxpayers. Go to yeah, exactly. the traffic going by your house. It's going to end right up. <laughs> well, right that, down and none. Again, that's 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 all conversation that's worth having. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're going to fix it, I want to fix it. I don't want to, and, and not because I live there. I, no, I, I just think I want. I don't want to put a band aid on something that's only going to last five years. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's if you just upper if you just armor the upper embankment. Um, then that'll buy you. Well, it, it's hard to know because we don't know what kind of storms. I mean, the majority of the erosion that happened on it, this past storm, was from the upper end mm -hmm. of the embankment. Now, there's also erosion happening at the lower end. On the edges, um, over to the river. But most of what we had this past time was mudslides that came down. There was like three or four of them that came mm -hmm. down. Because there's, if you look at it right now, there's so many springs on on that slope that you can see them today. I mean, just watch a little bit. Um, I mean, I would feel pretty. I mean, I, I agree with Dave. I think in my my lifetime or my kids' lifetime, that at some point that road's going to be done. I mean, it's, I just think the inevitable is coming. Yeah. But I mean, I would say at this point, I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt us too much financially if we armored the upper end slope. Um. But I mean, we could be here again ten years from now, saying Our whole things in the river. You know. Well, what, uh, what about all the pressure cracks that are along? Like you see the edge towards the river, and then you come in maybe a foot. There's also some cracks right there that you know, as those widen, that's just going to go sure. into the road. So, what do we, you know, do about that? I mean, that's a that's a question I have. Is you know, safety. I mean, are we just going to go buy a whole bunch of um, Jersey barriers, and it's because we can't put guardrail there. Yeah. And Jersey bury the whole. I mean, it's or maybe we make it one lane. You know, I mean, I'm not really, you know, but I don't know how you monitor one lane if yeah, you can't see the I other mean, end. We're gonna put. I think the sections like, like 
five hundred bucks to rent. So yeah. be I mean, I think that section of road's like it's not continuous, but you know, there's like five hundred yeah. feet. Worth it is, but you can't see there. from like Corey. Rich it's not all like, five hundred there. You know. It's not a clean like I see right. Dave coming. I can stop and let Dave come. It's yeah, it goes around the corner and yeah, and those are pricey. So I just continue on to another town. Say that again. Just continue on. A road that starts in Bethel and ends in Randolph is a lot harder to discontinue than a road that starts in Bethel and ends in Bethel. Yes, you're very. That's very. Yeah. Easy. So I had to be yeah, only accessible for right only right. accessible from out of town. Now we and do have some of those. We do, but we also uh, have, you know, you have some firefighters, your road foreman, and you know, that live would live on the land off side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think well Mark when we called Morgan last meeting, he said that is a dead end. So I don't know. I know it's dead end. Yeah, I don't know to where I would have to look. I mean they have to go over the river. Yeah. But, so that's a bridge. There you go. Well, there's your money. Right there. There's your two point one million. You got a bridge to one. I mean, house. I clearly but think that the I fix that's been presented with us is is one that isn't an it's option too much. for us. It's right. both financially, and I just don't think long term that's going to yeah. be. All right. You know. So, do you want me to talk to FEMA about this? Huh? I don't think it's done. Yeah. And plan on having that road forever. It's true. So, well, go, do, do you want me to present this to FEMA? Then, then taper down. Yeah, there. whatever. Maybe, the, maybe there'll be somebody with a. If they have a mitigation branch, I can. Yep. I'll talk to Carlos on Friday, and then in the meantime, I'm going to talk to Morgan, and we're going to have to go out there. And he drives it several times a day. You know, get to and from work. He's grown up out there, and talk to him about what you know. What does he think? Some options are going to be here for us and and just to get some to buy in and some information from him so I'll but we i mean we have other roads that are in similar instances where you just think that at some point it's going to go, go down yeah. through i mean but you go up like country. the upper end of the upper end of gilead upper gilead uh, yeah or or buy them by them, yeah, but there's only that isn't a through way. No, so. but you go up there, and there's parts of that road where you're like, at some point, that thing is just gonna down, sure. down off into the. But this one is, as you know, from being out there, is heavily traveled. So for us, it's really what we're looking at is what's to manage our liability here is knowing we have plenty of signs out, this sort of thing. But all right, yeah. so we'll have to see what our options are. But and again, this just came. I told you I'd give it to you when it came, and yep. I saw the number and was like. Yeah, show it all to FEMA, you know, yes. have a throwaway. See what what Carlos has to say. Maybe he can. But at this it. point, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, this was a, a big ticket item when before we even knew about the culvert we're on the hook for. Uh, yeah, camp sure. Brook, you know, exactly. Like, so before, <laughs> let's let's say we decided to go with this fix, right? I mean, this is two, you know, quarter million dollars that, that we would have to come up with ourselves, right? Right. To, to fix this road. And based on this fix and you'll need a but now to we're going to need probably three hundred thousand dollars just to fix that one culvert up in plus Camp the Brook two we've already gotten a grant so yeah you know so i think that dubois and king told me he had a i want to say he said like a six hundred thousand dollar price tag on that culvert i told you what we need I to cried a little once. you know we was... need to start playing the powerball as a town yeah, exactly. on the wednesdays <laughs> and saturdays <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> And there hope we end it as a town and we'll go cash in, we'll get our work done. But yeah. Yeah, there it's you go. Oh, maybe someone will win and I mean, I'm oh, sure man. there is an amount of money that you could put into that road that will keep it forever, but I just mm -hmm. don't know if that's being and Dave maybe done. this may not be enough. And I don't think it would be either. Yeah. So you're really stabilizing just the top seventy five feet yeah. after that. It's a, yeah. all right. Well let me just see what yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Well, let's just see what we'll see what they have to say. So hopefully in two weeks we'll have some more information from FEMA and good or bad news from, from about Camp Brook and see what we're doing. Just uh, on in the same still on Finley Bridge. Between the bridge over the river and the railroad bridge. Yeah. But right at the river. Yeah. The river has taken 
away part of the, um, it is eaten into the bank where the road is. Yep, yep. I just, yeah, he said, uh, I'm just calling that to your no, attention. No, Jaron uh, Borg, I already got permission from Agency Natural Resources. He told me I could, we could armor it there and then he told us that would work. I just, I just, yeah. no, I, I just saw it, and measured it for us. So we know it's out there. So, but we're kind of waiting to see what are we going to do with, if we were hauling in a bunch of riprap to deal with the other part of Finley, then it makes sense to deal out at the same time. So, but, um, but yes, thank you. Yep. Nope. It's on the list. Yeah, just, like I said, you got the permit. Yeah, that, so I know. That's part of the bend that changed. I know. It's crazy, isn't that it? That last storm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know if that was in regards to her, um, yeah, they may be planning for a new bridge there at some point. Yeah, yeah somebody asked me about that. that so I was thinking well, maybe. I heard from Chris Bump because we spoke on the phone. I asked him about that, you know, because she came here and then I sent him the information we had, shared back and forth. And, and he said he was going to send a crew out to look at it because there's a lot of material under there. It's just like what we did at Line Bridge 2019. So he said, yeah, looks like we got to get a crew out there. So they'll survey it. And he's talking about make getting a crew out there to dig it out so uh, that's probably what they were up to well i, I don't know yeah i think it just might just been a coincidence i think they might be planning for a new you know they're always four or five years behind but i think they're planning oh, for a say structure ahead. there <laughs> no Maybe. it looks like i don't know he just a survey and they were doing you don't need a survey to go out there and remove debris right from the right i don't know so, you don't need it yeah you don't yeah. forget who's doing it yeah, I don't uh, know. Maybe they're looking at her pins versus what yeah, I, don't I don't know. Got me. Yeah, I Thank went over Finley Bridge and I look back, like you said, and it's like a little oh, there's, there's boat ramp thousands out of tons of there. materials in there. Oh, yeah, put that down the other side. There's a lot. It's true. Uh, we didn't have town manager report. I just, I have some updates, though. So, uh, Do you have something else? Oh, sorry. Um, garbage question our uh, law says that uh, manure is not garbage but again it's not about garbage it's about uh, uh, but it's what applied it is compost right and we call it out as that and we even say in our definition, compost, animal manure. Right. And But in the garbage section where we're talking about the yep. disposable stuff, the, the, down in the section C under duties, as per state Vermont Act 148, universal recycling and compost, mm -hmm. no compostable as garbage, no compostable materials are to be disposed of as garbage. Right. It's so ma the manure is not the Com garbage definition doesn't apply. Like I said, I mean the lawyer read the whole thing and gave us yeah. his opinion, but I'll focus. We'll focus Dick at him tomorrow and see what he says. But I'm circling that part, Gina, making a note. Um, goes against. Garbage definition number five. All right. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. But yeah, I circled it. Put all out there. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I have a meeting at ten um, regarding the brick grant, which is the federal grant that we got to just part of mitigation grant to look at that big col um, box culvert on Gilead. So this is one of those things federal that you get your, you get this, you know, you get a grant to design and engineer it. Then once you get that done, then you can get a grant, you know, to build it. So it's a process. So we have our first meeting tomorrow morning at 10 and then at 11 on Wednesday, I have a meeting with Gary Dean. He was obviously not happy with your decision. So he's coming in to see me on Wednesday at 11 and then Friday at two we have FEMA uh, so Carlos is coming back in and um, we've, Chris has found some things that, um, that we missed during the original inventory. So the good news is from the date of my first 
meeting with FEMA a few weeks ago. We have 60 days from there to report any new damages. So Chris is emailing me and I'm documenting that. So we'll have, so the good news is we'll pick that up. So it's kind of what the week looks like. And um, it's going to look like I'm not there for the next two days. I am going to be there. Just vehicles, Jay's, Joe's working on one vehicle one day and one vehicle the next day. So I'll be in the town office, but um, no car there. So just so you know. And then I just also wanted to let you know, I have scheduled a vacation November. So I will be gone from like the 15th to the 22nd. So like a week, kind of like a, I think it's like a Tuesday to a Wednesday or Monday to a Wednesday or something like that. So, so yeah, I'm going to take a vacation. And uh, so anyways, I just wanted to give you a heads up so you guys didn't spring it on. <laughs> so, going to North, uh, going to Durham. South Carolina, gonna go see um oldest daughter, yeah. So go see her. No, I'll be back just before next. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, well, she has to work though. <laughs> nurse, so she has to work. I don't want to travel oh. for Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, no, definitely don't want to be she flying. She has to work, so you'll we'll be, have to do a Thanksgiving. You be able to walk home fast and you'll fly. Why, when we're young, we don't make enough money and we have all the family and when we are older we get and when we're young we don't get the vacation time when we need it right and when <laughs> we're older we have <laughs> so yes yeah, so i don't have plan. i'll have some time for like days off in october but this is the time i'm going to be gone for yeah. a piece of time um so that's it for the time actually i didn't write you anything at the time but so that's all I, i've got so you know what I'm doing. It's all just FEMA, FEMA, FEMA. So, um, so then, for me, I have a, some things I want to talk about the roads too. Um, very happy to see the boys got up there and took care of those all the pictures I took. Yes, they appreciate it. it was helpful. They did a great job. Um, on the other side of that, which I'll be honest and say it irritated me. They drove right by a, a massive hole for two days and didn't do anything about it. Is it harvest the youngest bird? It's just one hole by the by the Dimmock property where the dam where the pond has a spillway. On the other side of it, you could drive my truck in there and you would never see it again. Was it part of the contract that I you know, I don't know. Yeah, but it's it's only I don't know off the top of my head. fifteen I didn't feet take home, that section and out. it's a lot of road. It's not there anymore. Yeah. So that but I'm saying this because if I don't part know. of another contract, fine. Uh -huh. oh, but I don't. I, I was told by Dylan that he's he had the contract up there and he's about done because he's working up by Smith Farm. Yeah. So I'll have to ask because I didn't. Chris and I didn't stake out that quadrant. AJ and Morgan did, so I don't. There's know. no stakes there. Okay, so Dimmick. You've been stealing stakes. Yeah, so, phones. but it's across, oh. it's right there where the Dimmick house was. No, well, just my side of that, where, where the uh, dam spillway goes oh, okay, underneath the road. Spillways. Okay. All right, let me ask. Definitely you. the challenge has been is there's a lot of things that's going on in and around. Well, it almost looks like it's part of the project, but it's not like we continue to have so much rain that we're like, I'll, I'll drive one day and come back through the next day. I'm like, where did that big hole come from? Like, you know, that wasn't like, there two days ago. It's been there. And, oh, because there's been a lot of, you know, just everything's so saturated. You know, trees are falling over and and embankments are sloughing in. Yeah. I just heard about um, that one and the going down Perham Road. If you take a plow truck down in there, yes. back up out of there, you're going to destroy the front end of that truck. We know that about that one. Mo talked to Morgan about it the other day and said that there was a big issue hey. right there. Yeah, and Morgan is aware, so he does know that. Okay. As uh, Mo said, he goes, I don't have a problem with it. He said, I got my tractor, I can get out. But he said there was an issue there. So um, Morgan is aware of that because Mo told us. And, um, and the big thing. Yeah. We we knew we had a problem on our hill, but it seems to be growing with, I don't know this, but I feel confident in saying that we have a serious drug problem, drug dealer problem on our hill. 
you do. Serious. Uh -huh. I mean, the traffic going by my house is crazy. I know. And, and, and the they're from are aware Connecticut of and Massachusetts and New Jersey. And like with a certain resident or yeah. a certain resident? Mm -hmm. Have you called the state police? The state police have been called. Uh, Oscar has been called. Yep. And, well, I don't know how they work, but they have been working as, and we got little kids in that area. There's actually a very small child that lives right across the road. Uh-huh. Yeah. Today, no. I went by going to a, a job, and all of a sudden, two vehicles that were there were on my ass. We went to Randolph Center. One went one way, one another. I looked at a job coming back, and one of the vehicles was back. I got some stuff in my house. Went back to Randolph, and that back vehicle's out of gun again. And that vehicle is in and out way too much to, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm very, I'm very concerned at what's going on up there, and I don't know what to do about it because we've called, uh, my neighbor has, and uh -huh. the people who live across the street from them have called the state police. I know. And it's like, what are, what are we going to do? And Oscar's aware of it. The state police are aware of it. Um, we had another instance up there, a uh, very close call with uh, the contractor that's working up there. And <clears throat> so uh, it's, they're aware of it, but it's beyond our purview other than. I, I'm asking, what can I do? <laughs> you, know what, you know what I would say is, is if I was you, I would call and ask for the commander. It's Hugh O'Donnell, and he is very, very nice. And I would speak to him and ask him um, what, you know, what you can do, what do the local residents need to do. Um, I know they're aware of it, and I know Oscar's aware of it, but he's, I, I'm not sure what his rank, I just know he's the commander down here. But I would ask him and then let us know if there's something the town needs to do, or, I mean, I we certainly have... Oscar's aware and is trying to do enforcement, speeding, and this but it's always like you're just, you know, what's that old expression? There's never a cop around when you need money. You know? yeah, I understand. But it's that. so challenging. There's but so many. There, there is. From right about now till 2 30 in the morning, if you drove by my house, by there, and out of East Bethel back, there would be two different cars there. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. And every it, night. It's so challenging because it, they have hamstrung law enforcement from being able to do a lot of that type of work nowadays. Because I remember, I mean, I remember you'd still stop at Champlain Farms, you know, probably six, seven, eight years ago. And, you know, the, the house above Richardson's store. I mean, you could stop there, go in to get a drink, come out and you'll see three different individuals go to that house and come back, you know, clearly we're buying drugs, right? And I remember calling the state police to say, Hey, I mean, you clearly, as clear as day, you can see that there is not good stuff going on here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they're like, we know that, but there's nothing we can do about it. Like, there's, yeah. unless you can actually yeah. see yeah. it yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. or that, yeah. they, they have no they, jurisdiction. There, um, they can't go you, knock on the door. They can't go to the Are there it. children in that home? Because yeah. if there was children, you'd call like DCF or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. There was a problem uh, up on uh, North Main Street here, and one of the residents that lives nearby, I gave him Oscar's number. He called Oscar, and he thought that the guy that had just been arrested was back there, but Oscar ran the guy's name, and he said, no, he's no longer there. He said, well, then somebody else has moved into that house because somebody's grandfather owned it, and they have a small child that is living there with people. He said it was so bad one night, there was druggy, whatever, out on the road, directing traffic because so many vehicles were coming and going. Oh, but God. I talked to him a week later, and he said, I don't know if it was just Oscar, the state police, but he said everything is shut down in that house right now. I mean, so, I, I, I know, like, the experience in town when we had some of the things that were right, right in the village here. Yeah, they're still going on right across. You know, I mean, some of that stuff was sort of resolved by just having – more presence, right? You know, like, because before we didn't have a lot of presence, and then yeah. for a while there, like, Oscar really spent a lot of time, you know, not, not... When he first started. Like, indirectly spent a lot of time in the area, so then, then they go somewhere else, you know what I mean, type yeah. deal, so I don't know. But it's challenging, because we don't have a lot of presence right now to begin with, not alone 
on Christian Hill, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah, they can even their neighbor he's getting just go and park in the neighbor's yard because they can oh. and just sit there and just take pictures. Yeah. Let them see them taking pictures. Yeah, I, it's, I, I told him, I said, I'm not sure I'm going to do that because say, that, that would be really Paul's got nothing dangerous. to do. That's so Paul. Would, he, <laughs> but, but I'll talk to you after the meeting. He's got some time on his hands. I, I have some, I can talk to you after the meeting. I have something for you. Yeah, I don't know. It's very challenging. It, it, mm -hmm. I don't know. Paul can be the next constable. You can send out a neighborhood watch or something. Like that. <laughs> don't you want to be a constable? You know, along those lines, Oscar told me the other day he was called He was called to Champlain Farms because there was a vehicle parked right in front of Champlain Farms, and the guy was shooting up right in the vehicle. So this is not anything new for this area. It's still a very uh, terrible uh, problem that's going on, and there's just too much of it and not enough enforcement. And uh, that's the way it is right now. Well, the thing is, is, when you do enforce it, it just... They're out of jail and they're back out there. Yeah, this is really... I mean, we know the situation up on North Main Street has been going on for years. Uh, this is not anything new. Um, and it just, uh, you just can't, you, they are, they are, the law enforcement is handcuffed as far as what they can do. And uh, it's up to the neighborhood watches and whatnot to report it. Call 911. Call 911 ad infinitum. And eventually somebody will get up there and uh, try to do something. Are there actually active neighborhood watches and not that I'm aware of. When I was a kid, that was a big thing. Yeah. There was, you know, well, every there was one up on North Main Street, or there used to be one up on North Main Street. The anyway. signs are still there. The signs are still there. Yeah. I yeah. just don't know if they meet on a. Yeah. Regular basis. I mean, that used to be a pretty big thing when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. There were ways to take care of it in the past that are no longer legal. That's <laughs> 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 right. I mean, I've heard the stories about people who got out of line and they had they the were given they were given a chat, then they went to the hospital and then they came back and they were good. Yeah. Well, just let us know what pie you like for when you're in. Yeah, what spending time with we'll the file to file the pie. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, a quick story. I told Oscar. I said, "Someone come to my house. I'm going to protect myself." He said, "Knock them up." Where I don't know what the words he used, but if I have a back door. I have to let that creep in. If there's some way I can escape, you know, the back window or something, I have to let him have my house. And I says, I know a guy with back home. Yeah. <laughs> I found years ago. Blackboard Bethel. I can see the title now. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sad to even think these thoughts. But what, I know. What is going on? I know. It's, it's very, scary. very scary. I just get myself a German Shepherd and Keeps everybody Bless you. Away. No, but, she's sneezing. Oh. She's giving you COVID, Chris. Don't worry. She's going around again. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. All right. Anything? We got select board meeting minutes from the 28th. <laughs> Any corrections to that or just a motion to accept it? Question is uh, if we uh, last sentence. Select board meeting. This is in reference to the right road meeting. Yeah. The select board meeting time will be changed to 5 p.m. on 11 2, but that's not a normal select board meeting day. Well, I'm still meeting. So I'm more... confused about. No, it's a special meeting. Normally, we wouldn't have a meeting on its second and fourth. Right. No, I understand what he's saying. Um, I guess we could change the wording to the public. Well, Here. we could just remove it. I mean, it already states above what we're doing. Right. So this and was just a footnote, I think, that... Um, that yeah, well, no, but wasn't the point was to, after we had our uh, on-site, that then we were going to get together with the lawyer, right? Because yeah, well, he wait, was going to be in town still. Because you have um, the inspection of the premise will be held at three, and then you're having a you are having a public hearing slash select board meeting at five o'clock. I think probably 
my thought was, because I think Julie put this in there, was just kind of letting people notice that instead of meeting at six, this meeting will be at five, but we don't have to call it. So so I guess and, and what Jean's getting at is what what is the purpose of the meeting at? At five, uh, that's your public hearing on the discontinuance, yeah. which is still part of a select board meeting. So we could call it select board meeting slash public hearing or something. I, I just talked to your wife. She wrote it in there. <laughs> she, she asked me about it. Well, we get to five o'clock because we didn't want to. Because the lawyer was going to be here. And, yeah. Right. So I could just change it to say, I don't care what it is. What do you want? What would you like to say, Jean? I don't think it's necessary. Okay, then we'll remove it. All right. There you go. That's easy. We will, I'll make a note. Okay. But don't remember, you're riding right home with her. Do we have to um, notify or the public? There'll be a whole hearing process. It's okay. all going to go yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, I just need a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the 28th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, you'd ask Chris about the cruiser cost, so I printed out the we change out of did the repair, but Oscar bought his own brake parts and then wafer blades, and I think he had brakes done, oil change, that sort of thing. Then your Pleasant Street sidewalk local concerns meeting, your August numbers. Well, brake parts were expensive. Yeah. Nine hundred bucks. I just did all. Pads on my truck for ninety bucks. <laughs> I'm, he had it wasn't just the pads. He had. Uh, I mean, you had a rotor, stuff. Throw a rotor in there. It had to be more than that. It had to be more. Yeah, there was all kinds. Yeah, Joe. So you mentioned buy a set of rotors, rotors and pads. Well, I'm just saying, he had. Center. This is what I looked at the bill. Brake pads. The other the bottom one was free for I'm gonna go say Frank, my <laughs> cousin just had his pickup brakes done and over fifteen hundred dollars. Well, I just pulled the invoice from them and looked at it. Some of it's hard to tell what it is. I mean, because it's. Skews and it might be the other way around. The parts might have been 493 and the labor might have been 900 bucks. No, the labor is J and J Auto, O'Reilly are the parts. Mm. Yeah, that's weird. So, I so, anyway, so like I said, some of it you can tell that it says breaks and then it's hard to know. Yeah, when it's just pieces, parts. Maybe you had other work done. Yeah, but, anyways, must have had but that's what it yeah. was. You asked what it was, and that's what it was. Report. Okay. So then the August number. Run downstairs to see if Joe's still down at the history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I think they know. Well, that's what's hap that what happens when you keep driving it over the mountain back and forth every day. <laughs> yeah, break, go. Go. break, break, breaks. Same thing with the greater. Yeah. Any, any, up uh, did has it gone into getting the work nope. on it yet, or what is it? But um, uh, AJ talked to John Deere, excuse me, and think for a second, and um, they are ordering the parts. And they said once they get in the shop, and they should only have it in the shop for about a week, week and a half. So that was a lot better than we thought. We thought it'd be down for a month, so that was good news. And today the grader is down, but they ordered a part and um. They're going to fix that themselves, whatever that issue is. I didn't ask. Okay. <laughs> don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> so they were. FEMA fixing. cover it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they were fixing it. So. Anything else come before the board? Hearing none, I see the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. Right. 